Hey everybody, Tom Cherry Holmes here with the FujiNet project and I'm going to make a quick little video here showing a really cool feature that's been added over the last few days. Uh, Jeff Peepmeyer, who's been working on the uh, uh, printer emulations that we currently have, took a little break from that to actually fold in uh, something that I had found some time ago, which was a portable implementation of the SAM speech synthesizer that had been ported from 6502 Assembler to a portable, very portable C, one instruction at a time. And because of this, uh, this entire implementation of SAM runs entirely on the ESP32, sending the audio via the audio in pin on the SIO connector back to the Atari and therefore out to uh, the television display. If you check out our latest copy of the repo now, you'll actually see that there's a new library here. And this contains the entirety of the SAM speech synthesizer. No samples are used. Everything is basically synthesized from a whole series of tables, uh, which govern basically a formant synthesizer with a whole bunch of rules attached to it. It's really informative to take and dig through the source code to see how this all works and really how this was ported in from 6502 Assembler to something that was extremely portable. Uh, if you notice here on the debug display, you'll actually see that we have, instead of how we had 20 devices registered before, now we have 21. Well, where did we hook this up? This was a question that I was having, and I wasn't sure how we were going to actually be able to implement this. I thought we were going to literally do a separate V device that you would be talking to uh, that would act like an output-only device. You send your text to it, bam, done. But Jeff had a much better idea. Uh, Jeff, in the interest of expediency, literally attached this to one of the P devices, specifically P device number four. This immediately allows access to the SAM speech synthesizer at all times because the operating system always has the printer device active and it will work pretty much everywhere. So if we go ahead, for example, now and turn on my 1200XL here, we're going to boot into FujiNet config. And you're going to see that all I have here is a bog standard Atari DOS 2.0S. And we're just going to boot into it. You can see from the command frames right there, we're not responding to any polls, we're not loading any handlers into memory. And if we actually go here, we'll see pretty much that the only thing I have on here besides DOS and DUP are my FujiNet network commands, which are not being used here at all. But if I go ahead and open up a write to printer device number four, we'll see that, wow, suddenly something opened here. Currently, we have Reciter actually hooked up uh, to this particular device interface. Uh, the other SAM phonetic language is also available. We just need to take and hook it up and figure out, uh, basically work out a way to take and switch between uh, phonetic input and reciter input. But for right now, reciter is hooked up for ease of use. And there we go. Look at that. So we literally took, and you saw right here, it calculates all the tables, everything needed, to break everything up. You can see all of the individual rules that are being applied and the phonetic output that it's being generated to. 
and how all of these break out into the individual tables that they're pulling from, the trips through the individual parsers, which generate all of the relevant tables, and finally, we generate all of the amplitude and frequency data for the final speech output, which is sent out through the tables. You may have noticed that the output is a little bit loud. This is basically because we uh, have an impedance mismatch in the hardware that we need to correct uh, with a 4.7 microfarad uh, cap that we need to apply to the audio in. Uh, that will be on the next revision of the hardware. But for right now, this was just enough to get the point across. Coincidentally, because this is actually being generated as 8-bit data at 22,050 hertz, the output quality that's coming out of SAM here on the ESP is significantly higher than the 4-bit output uh, at 8,000 hertz, eh, 6,000 to 8,000 hertz that comes out of uh, SAM running on the Atari. And best of all, no screen blanking. With that, we can close the pin, we can close the connection, and everything goes back to normal. Now, because of the impedance mismatch and because there is now a floating DC offset that's currently on the audio in pin, uh, the audio is currently muted for everything else out of the Atari currently. Again, we need to fix this in the next hardware revision. But I thought I wanted to go ahead and make a quick video here so you guys could see this in action. Until next time.